This movie... Ugh. I mean it! Ugh. It's really... Fucking fuck fuck! Okay. I apologize. Fuck that fuck! Okay. I'm really sorry, it's just... Man, this is a bad one. I mean, just saying the title of this movie pisses me off. That's how bad it is. What? <clears throat> a troll in Central Park? This movie! A troll in Central Park! I mean, talk about pandering to your kids and not having any respect for their intelligence. Often considered Don Bluth's worst film, this movie doesn't even seem like a real kids movie. It seems like a parody of a kids movie. You know in a show when you see kids watching TV and some over-the-top nonsense is playing that obviously nobody put any thought into? You know, because it's in the background and nobody needs to pay attention to it. Yeah, imagine a whole movie like that. Just a complete waste of time that has nothing to offer. I don't care if it's innocent and cutesy, it's a piece of shit. With no constructive creativity that any audience member can see. I have to sit through it? No, you're gonna sit through it. Let us venture through a troll in Central Park. So at first you think the movie's gonna be kinda cool. There's these dark backgrounds, some neat looking monsters. This awesome looking creepy place is known as the Kingdom of Trolls. And then... <sighs> our main character appears. His name is Stanley. And the only way to describe him is imagine Bilbo Baggins just ate the Lucky Charms leprechaun and got shit out through Dopey's anus. And that's the nice version. I'm just a sweet William. Uh, <laughs> I mean Stanley to do it. He's voiced by Dom DeLuise. Imagine, Dom DeLuise in a Dom Bluth movie. It turns out he has a magic green thumb that can make precious, beautiful flowers appear. The only downside is that flowers aren't allowed in the Kingdom of Trolls. Say, what was that? <laughs> I laughed to hide the uncontrollable fear of losing my mother. <laughs> I thought I saw one of them ma -ma -ma flower things. Oh well. Have a rotten day! I'm a bad troll. A very bad troll. Okay, this is what happens when you let your five-year-old write the screenplay. And then the troll says, I'm a bad troll. Oh, that's good, son. And then the troll said, I'm a bad troll. I have to go potty. Oh, even better. And then he says, I have to go potty. No, really, I have to go potty. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, go ahead, go, go, go potty. Still a good line, though. So Stanley goes to his house and, oh god, as if hobbits couldn't get any gayer. You know, Violet, what this garden needs is a big rosy posy right there. But the other trolls suspect the pansy growing pansy as they approach him outside. For your crime, you are going before the number one flower hater in the land. Oh, Gnorga. Isn't that a weird name? Sounds like the sound you make when you sneeze and hiccup at the same time. Gnorga! No face shall smile, no star shall glow. Boy, Lindsay Lohan really let herself go, didn't she? <laughs> so she is the queen of trolls and spends most of her time singing songs that would actually make Andrew Lloyd Webber sound original. It feels delicious to be so vicious. I'm Ganoga, the queen of me. <laughs> I'm so animalistic to be cannibalistic. Bad is rad and I'm ballistic! <laughs> he is kind, he is good, he is gentle, and he is giving a bad name to trolls everywhere! Stone him! Oh, trust me, I think enough people involved in this movie have been stoned already. I won't have him growing any more of those things! Need I remind you, we are bad trolls! So her husband recommends not stoning him, but rather banishing him to a place without flowers. I know a place, rock and steel, nothing grows. Why, it's a shoe-in for the tabloids. <laughs> so without even knowing where the place he's talking about is, she sends him directly there. <laughs> yeah, she sends him to the land of rock and steel, where nothing grows in... Central Park, New York. Okay, did you guys even read your own script? There's flowers everywhere, you morons! Oh, oh, oh! So he arrives in Central Park. Seriously, it's called a park. How can you not know flowers grow there? As he's given the traditional New York welcome. Oh! Hello. Zoom, motherfucker! Hey! 
So he runs around in, I guess, what's supposed to be a chase scene, but it goes on forever. Come on, Blue, you're telling a story, not one of your Dragon Slayer games. <laughs> so he finally ends up under a bridge, get it, troll under a bridge, haha, <laughs> as he decides to take rest in a giant bed of marijuana leaves. Hey, I think I'm starting to see the inspiration for this movie. Okay, so we cut to two kids named Rosie and Gus, and their parents, who for some reason are played by Jonathan Price and Haley Mills. Just listen to how well they hide their British accents. You know I have an important case to prepare for. I have an open house on Park Avenue today. <laughs> Sounds about as convincing as house. Oh, come on, it's obvious! It's so incredibly obvious! The park will have to come later. It always has to be later! Why can't we ever do what I want to do? Your father works very, very hard to make our life nice, children. You have to learn to appreciate that. Yes, we all have to appreciate what we have. For example, I could have been the star of Saved by the Bell. I was the star of Saved by the Bell, and yet for some reason I'm not the star of Saved by the Bell. Good morning, Miss Bliss, my fucking ass! Sorry. So while you're probably wondering why two British parents raise non-British kids, Gus puts a sign on the door to keep Maria, the housekeeper, out of his room. Stay out, Maria! Hey, Rosie, wanna go with me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it does say privet, kips out, so I guess I better follow the directions. Okay, this is why there's a difference between a housekeeper and a babysitter. Didn't they teach you that in jolly old London? So the kids go down to Central Park where they get in all sorts of dangers, thank you Maria, as we listen to some of the brilliant dialogue that our writers came up with for Rosie. Boop, bug, butterfly, flower high. That's great, honey. Can you say these words as well? I knew you could. So Rosie finally stumbles upon Stanley as they partake in several minutes of undiluted filler. This is pretty much it, people. Just a whole hour of watching things bounce and smile. That's the entire movie. Don't believe me? Just keep watching. God, this is the equivalent of waving your keys in front of a baby's face. This movie is on par with keys. <laughs> Should he really react this way to a toddler kissing him? I mean, if any people you knew reacted this way, especially in Central Park, I don't think you'd watch with charm at all. I think you'd probably call the cops. Oh, please, tell me your name. Rosie. <gasps> Rosie, did you eat? Rosie. Oh, yes, I like that a lot. Tell I a story! Oh, and Seriously, there's only so much whimsical pandering an audience can take! Do something of substance! I like to close my eyes. No, 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 not so sing! Not sing! Only see. Oh, and absolutely green. Birds singing happy songs. Good God. My Little Pony, the Care Bears, Teletubbies, Cabbage Patch Kids, the Smurfs, Barbie, Pound Puppies, Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake, Barney the Dinosaur, all the high school musicals, Jem, and the goddamn Get Along Gang are fucking butch compared to this. Ah! Oh, thank God, an interruption. My boat! So Gus comes across the troll and can't believe his eyes. I'm a troll. Talking flowers. This is weird. This is weird? Uh-uh. Weird is when your alarm clock goes off like five minutes early. This is an abomination of annoyance. So Gus wants to take Rosie away, which causes her to start crying. This somehow gets the attention of the queen. It's a baby crying. Oh, she's ours so miserable. There's probably millions of babies crying all over the world, but this one particular I want to home in on. Hey, 
This is serious. Ah, uh, step aside, chumps. I'll show you how to make the kids smile. So, because Rosie's crying seems to be the first big dilemma in this movie, the flowers try to cheer her up. Come on, follow me. Oh, boy. One of my all-time favorite movies. How did he bring himself to such a fucking low? I'll tell you how. It's that goddamn troll. Yeah, that fucking little troll. He's the cause of all of this, and I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Hello, this is Stanley the Troll. Happy, happy, happy. Stanley, how dare you destroy a great animator's career with your mere existence? Oh, but I didn't, Mr. Critic. I'm sharing all the good, 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 good goodness that came from flowers, sunshine, and animals that smile with their mouths open. Yeah, but couldn't you make something with a little more intelligence and charm to it? I mean, this is so annoying! But annoyance is part of my charm. I'm like that cute little puppy who barks a lot, or a unicorn's horn shoved up your ass, or pancreatic cancer. Okay, look, I'm just gonna hang up. Obviously, I'm getting nowhere with you. Be sure to share lots of hugs. Hugs, 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 hugs. Oh, God, there's more movie. Okay, so the Queen of Trolls finds out that Stanley is still alive, so she decides to rip off Alice in Wonderland and make Gus's tears literally cry him a river. What's happening? It's Gnorga! She's put a curse on you! But Stanley's green thumb actually makes a larger boat. Hi, how can he do that? As they float on the river of tears. How's that happen? You believed in saving your sister so much, your power was stronger than Gnorga's. But that still doesn't explain where the fucking boat came from! Anything that's real starts with a dream. Dreams are silly. No, no they're not. Look, Gus, see this boat? This is no ordinary boat. This is a dream boat. Wait, so if you just dream that certain things will exist, they'll just magically exist? That's... nuts! You can't just dream for something to happen and expect it to magically happen. That's not how life works. Hell, if that was true, I would wish for a waterfall to drown those little bats. Oh, hey. Oh, <laughs> All right, now I wish we had to crash and burn. No way. This is my dream, and nobody gets hurt in my dreams. Son of a bitch. than my dreaming. Oh, that's because I have buttery butterflies, beautiful flowers, and the wasted talent of ex-Disney animators. You are scum! I love you. So Stanley and the kids sail through a world of magic, literally done just through the power of dreaming. That's the only explanation. What are you trying to teach our kids, movie? That if you just dream, your dog will come back to life or your parents will get back together? God damn it, you need logistics and a system in place to execute that vision! This isn't pandering to your kids, it's simple logic! Dreams don't happen by just dreaming, you make it happen! The phrase is, follow your dreams, not just dream alone, that makes no sense! And sweet Jesus, this musical number is still going! What's the point? What's the purpose? It doesn't further the story, it's not funny, it's not entertaining! Why are you still on? No, you know what? I got it. I know what the intended audience for this was. This is for babies who are high. No, no, pets who are high. No, no, pets fleas who are high. No, no, no. You know what? This movie was intended for your wall. Just show it to your wall and maybe possibly it'll be entertaining. But to be honest, even that's doubtful. Here's the last wall that they showed the movie to. Should have rented Iron Giant. So everybody sleeps, because I guess it's the movie's nap time, as Ganon's wife here decides to go down to Central Park and destroy Stanley for good. So she obliterates all the trees as... Nobody calls the cops about it. And the kids wake up to find that Central Park daytime is looking an awful lot like Central Park nighttime. The kids decide it's time to go home as they wander through the wasteland. <laughs> okay, I think the bite sort of ruins whatever threatening effect you were going for there. 
So after an annoying chase scene, the queen captures Rosie as Gus tries to get Stanley to help rescue her. Yo, yeah, but what can I do? What about all your powers, mister? You gotta believe, green thumb. Yeah, tell that race crispy elf. My prestidigitation is no match for Ganorga's magic. Oh, sure. You're just saying that because you're scared to fight her. <gasps> oh, did he actually suggest that somebody had balls in this movie? I'd help you if I could, but I can't. She'll turn me into stone, and I don't want to be recognized. You'll never have a dream come true, and you know why? Take your pick. You're a coward! Good choice. So after Gus frees Rosie from the cage that wasn't even locked, the queen and her husband chase after the two as she turns Gus into a troll himself. This sort of backfires, though, as now he has the power to turn people into stone. Which begs the question, why did she turn him in the first place? Rosie! Rosie! It's okay, kid. All you have to do is dream! Huh, I fail. So gee, I guess Rosie's really dead. They're not gonna fake us out or anything, are they? Rosie. So Stanley finally nuts up and tries to defeat the Queen. What do we have here? <sighs> <laughs> So after they literally declare thumb war, Stanley wins with his flower power. <laughs> but I guess the queen uses her power of controlling thumbs. Yeah, that's one of her powers now. To use Gus's thumb to turn Stanley into stone. Then the queen turns into a rose bush, it happens, which causes her magic to wear off and return Gus to normal. Which is weird, because that would mean Stanley would return back to normal as well. Oh, who cares? Our British parents return home for one more cameo as we find out the moral of this story. Yeah, that's right, there was a moral. Listen to this. You know, your mother and I, we've, uh, we've thought of a few real fun things we could do today. Dad, do you think today maybe we could do what I want to do. Ah, so that's the slapped on last minute lesson of this tale. If you don't get what you want, demand it more. What a wonderful lesson for kids. After all, this was the boy who politely asked, Why can't we ever do what I want to do? I want to do what I want to do. So I guess it only figures he should get a reward for being so patient. Blow me. So they go to the obliterated Central Park as they place Stanley in the woods. Gus uses his magic thumb that he now has. Consistency? What's that? As it appears to have no effect on him. Until... He's been taken up! Oh, he's, he's been, been taken, taken up! up. I can! Stanley? Close my eyes Stanley! Stanley! So my heart can plainly see. So Stanley comes back to life, the kid's parents never turn around, so I guess they never see him, and he rebuilds Central Park with his enchanted power. Okay, Stanley, going a bit too far now. Dude, Stanley, what are you doing? You're engulfing the entire city! We could fill everywhere with flowers. Oh my god, was this your evil plan all along? To enslave the city to carnivorous plant life? Stop it! We could live in a world that's Would you team up with Poison Ivy? This is like supervillain stuff. The world's economy is gonna collapse because New York has been overgrown by a giant hedge! World that's bright and shiny. And absolutely green. Okay, so Stanley enslaves New York because he can dream it, I guess. And that's the end. Whew! Boy, was this a hard one. I mean, I love Don Bluth, but this was shit! You ever get stoned or drunk with a bunch of friends and you were the first one to start sobering up and realize how stupid everyone was acting? That's this movie. I mean it. I didn't even show you half of the pandering or the pointless filler that this movie had. 
it has no atmosphere, the characters are annoying, the lessons are tagged on, and it just makes no sense. It's junk food. Brightly colored junk food for the mind. And I personally hate how it talks down to kids while offering virtually nothing in return. I mean, I don't mind mindless entertainment for kids, but it has to at least be entertainment. This is the kind of movie that thinks children will watch anything. And it really pisses me off. In fact, I'm gonna call that obnoxious little troll one last time. Posey, Posey, I love posies. Hello? Hey, Stanley. You know, your movie inspired me greatly, and... Oh, that's uh, beautiful. Yeah. And I finally realized that I think I can dream just as strong as you can dream. Maybe even outdream you. So, um, I have a very special dream lined up for you right now. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Critic. I sure hope that involves flowers and butterflies and... Uh, oh, excuse me, there appears to be a porcupine growing out of my anus. Oh, wow, yes, that's incredibly painful, actually. Uh, oh, oh, yes, incredible amount of pain. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, 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 no, now it's transformed into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Hello, Mr. Lizard, how are you? Oh, God, he's eating my organs! He's eating my organs! Oh, God! Oh, no, no, this is incredibly bad! Incredibly yes. Oh, no, I hate those... I'm a nostalgia critic, guy, body. remember? So you don't have, have to. I'm a bad troll.